I'm Valerie from Valerie's Photo Channel with a new tutorial on using Lightroom's Adjustment Brush. Sometimes rather than needing to adjust the whole image, you just want to make some edits or adjustments in certain areas without affecting the rest of the image. That's where the Adjustment Brush in Lightroom Classic comes into play, and you'll find that you'll use it often. In fact, it's probably one of my favorite tools because it's so versatile. So for a qu quick recap, the Basics panel and the other panels along the right-hand side of the Develop module are global adjustments, which means any adjustment you make happens to the whole image. In contrast, the Local Adjustments panel here, these tools, are targeted adjustments, which means you can apply them just where you want them. So before we go to town on the Adjustment Brush, I'm just going to start here in the Basics panel and make some just some real basic adjustments in the Tone panel here. So I'm going to increase the exposure somewhere around there and I'm going to add a little bit of contrast. I'm going to take down the highlights a tad and I'm going to open up the shadows that's too much about right there and I'm going to take down the whites just a little and I'm going to add some vibrance and just a tiny bit of saturation and then this will be our starting point for making adjustments with the adjustment brush so I'm going to close the basics panel and I'm going to click on the adjustment brush you can also hit the keyboard shortcut K and you should see a panel that looks quite similar to the basic panel. And if you don't see this, if this little arrow is turned sideways, you might see this. So just click it so it faces down and you'll see the whole panel here. So um, you choose your effects just like you would with a basics panel. So you move the sliders the same way. So I'm just going to take the exposure and move it up here and I'm going to take my brush. You'll see it's two circles with a plus pin in the center. I'm just going to randomly brush here in the sky. Now you can increase or decrease the size of your brush by rolling your finger on the mouse up or down or two fingers on the tracker or the left or right bracket key in your keyboard or you can also adjust it manually with the slider here towards the bottom of the panel. And if you go somewhere that you didn't want to, if you brush somewhere you didn't want it to be, just hold down Alt or Option key and brush the area that you wanted to erase. If you want to see the mask where you're actually putting your adjustments, maybe if you're making really subtle ones and they're not quite so obvious, you can make it really easy by clicking this little box down here at the bottom and then your mask area will be in red so it makes it a lot easier and you can click that on or off um, toggle it on or off using the O key as well so when you're satisfied you can click the done button down here in the corner or else just put your tool back up here by clicking in the on the adjustment brush up here again and if you want to delete your a brush click on it to make sure it's active and you can either right click and hit the delete key or you can hit delete on your keyboard besides adjusting the sliders left or right to get the effect you want you can ad use adjustment brush presets which already have specific slider settings saved and you'll find them here under custom so for example Lightroom comes preloaded with some um, I've added others that I created myself and I've also bought some or acquired some over time and so these have presettings that just help um, speed up your adjustments so I'm not going to get into that right now just letting you know that they are there so let's start working with the adjustment brush on this image one of the other things you can do besides these sliders is you can add color using this square down here. So first I'm going to double click on effect to reset everything else and then I'm going to click on the color effect bar and you'll see this panel pops up. So automatically you'll get a dropper and you can just drop the color, drop the dropper on the color that you're looking for. And what I want to do is kind of 
bump up the colors here on the horizon. I want to warm, add a little bit more warmth. So I'm going to select kind of a golden color. And if you don't get exactly what you want with the dropper, you can try again, or you can also use this little slider here at the bottom and you can adjust the hue by moving it to the right or the left. And you can adjust the saturation by moving this slider to the right or to the left. And you'll, the color that is active is going to be up here on the right. This is your current color. And so when you're satisfied, just click anywhere out here in the gray and that box will close. So now we want to look at the brushes down here. We have the option of feathering to 100% or we can take that down. Typically, I like to leave the feathering at 100% because you get nice soft edges like this. So if you bring the feathering down to zero, you get hard edges like that. I'm going to leave the feathering at 100. Next is flow. Now flow is the opacity of the brush. And sometimes I like to have it set a little bit lower. I'm going to set it around the mid 60s because I like to be able to build up the brush with additional strokes just for a more control or a more subtle effect. But you, there are times when you'll probably want it at 100. Auto mask means that it helps you color inside the lines, so to speak. So it helps you keep your brush where you want it for the most part. And density is the uh, transparency of the brush strokes. So typically, you'll probably want that set to 100. And that's where I'm going to leave it now. So I'm going to go ahead and make my brush a little bit smaller and then I'm going to brush here on the horizon just to add a little bit more warmth here along the sunset. And then I think I want to add another brush to pump up a little bit of the pink right here in the sky where we see this. I just want to emphasize that a little bit. So I'm going to grab a new brush by clicking on new. I'm going to double click on effect to reset everything. Now we got rid of that color down here. And then this time I'm going to use the tint slider and I'm going to move that to the right. And I'm going to leave feathering at 100. I think I'm going to bring the flow up to 100 and leave auto mask and density where they are. And then I'm going to make my brush a little bigger. And I'm just going to brush here where we see that pink just to emphasize it a little more. And then if we want to see the before and after of our adjustment brush work, we can click this little box down here at the bottom and this toggles on or off the adjustment brush. So here it's turned off, here it's turned back on. And then I'm going to add one more brush. I'm going to click on new again and I'm going to double click on effect to zero everything out. And this time I want to light up this walkway just a little. So I'm going to increase the exposure somewhat. Where do I want it? Let's try about right there. And I'm going to leave feather flow and density at 100. Increase my brush size a little. And then I'm just going to brush this path. And I can toggle again. I can toggle the effect on or off. And I think I'm going to leave that where it is. So I'm going to click the done button down here. Now there's one other thing I wanted to show you. It's actually the radial filter. It acts similarly to the adjustment brush, so I thought it might be appropriate to show you here. So what I want to use it for is to highlight this area of the ocean and make it just a little bit brighter. So I'm going to click on the radial filter. The shortcut is Shift M and it's located right next to the adjustment brush. And you'll see we have, this should look familiar, we have a lot of the same or pretty much the same options as we did for the adjustment brush. But you'll note down here at the bottom, we just have feathering. We don't have the other options because this is not a brush. So first of all, I'm going to draw a circle here. And you can make your circle, that's, I just clicked and dragged. But you can also, if I just leave my mouse where it is, 
and just drag up. You can see I can make it change shape. I'm going to drag it to the left and it makes it skinny. And I'm just kind of going to go back to a circle and let go. And then you'll see there's a pin in the center and if you just grab it and drag it, you can move it around. So I'm going to move it right here. And going back to feathering, again I want to show you how important it is to make sure you get this right. So right now the feathering is set to 100%. I'm going to put the exposure way up. And so you can see that this is still a pretty subtle effect. You've got soft edges here, but watch what happens when I drag the feathering all the way down. It looks really harsh. So probably nine times out of 10, you'll want to keep the feathering at 100%. And then there's also a checkbox here for invert. When it's checked, the effect will only occur inside the radial filter, inside the circle. When this is unchecked, the effect will appear on the opposite. So it's going to affect everything but the inside. So I'm going to click that again to invert it back or click it back to just focusing on the center. And I'm going to move that exposure down because that's just too bright. Let's see. How about right there? And I'm going to click that Whoops, click the um, radio filter off for a moment. There it is, it's off, and there it is back on. So you can see it's not a huge, but it just gives it a little oomph of emphasis. And then you can either replace the tool up here or click the Done button. And we've exited that. And so here is our after. And if I hit the backslash key, we can see our before where it first started and then I'm going to hit the backslash key again and then here is our after with our adjustments. So I hope that you found this adjustment brush and radial filter tool tutorial helpful and if you did I'd really appreciate it if you would give me a thumbs up and also subscribe so you get future tutorials and I look forward to seeing you back. Thanks for watching. Thank you.